For the first part of today's lab, you are going to be making some solutions to use for testing the different properties of acids and bases. One of them is going to be a solution of KOH. You're going to be taking 20 milliliters of this stock solution that is 6 molar, and you have to calculate what should be the dilution that will give you a net 0.5 molar KOH solution. So you need 20 milliliters from this. Couple of things. First of all, whenever you are given a reagent bottle, you never put the lid down on the bench, okay? You always loosen it up and then hold it between your little finger and the palm of your hand while you grab the bottle with your other fingers and pour. If you feel that your hand is not big enough, don't worry, have your teammate, your lab partner, hold the, the cap for you. Another thing is that if you want to measure 20 milliliters, as you can see, if I try to go ahead with the graduate cylinder right away, what I'm going to see is that it's going to be very hard to pour into this thing, right? It's very inaccurate, and you're probably going to spill quite a bit of stuff. So what you want to do is take, an, a, take a beaker and figure out you know, what is approximately 20 milliliters of this. And then what you do, again, open the lid, and don't try to kind of like trickle it down. Water molecules have a property, and it is that they attract each other very strongly, which means they resist pouring, and if you try to do it too slow, what's going to happen is the liquid is going to dribble down the side of the bottle. So basically, you know, get your bottle, get your beaker. It's approximate anyway, so let's go ahead and get out 20 milliliters more or less. Just get a little more than what you need, just a tight more. And now, from the beaker, which has a spout, now you can go and pour it into your graduate cylinder appropriately and measure the actual amount that you need. Okay, see this is a lot easier this way. I'm going to pour it down and then I'm going to use the proper uh, form to put this at eye level and make sure the meniscus is sitting on the 20 milliliter mark. This is going to be our litmus paper test. Remember that litmus paper is a paper that's coated with a chemical that changes color in the presence of either acid or base. We are operating under the uh, idea that pink litmus paper will turn to blue in the presence of a base and blue litmus paper will turn to pink in the presence of an acid. So let's start here by putting in sodium chloride. And the idea here is you're going to have your sample in a test tube and you're going to use a glass stir rod and just touch the surface of the uh, paper to make a little dot. So I'm going to start out with sodium chloride, which should be completely neutral. I'm going to touch it here. Let me make a bigger drop here. There and another one over here. Now remember, the observation you're making is not that the paper is getting wet. Yeah, of course it looks a little darker, but it's because it's getting wet, right? So that doesn't uh, necessarily mean a change, all right? Let's go now with HCl. First, we're gonna spot it on the pink litmus paper. And then we're gonna spot it on the blue litmus paper. Please write down your observations. Lastly, we're going to do the KOH solution. First, we're going to spot it on the pink litmus paper. And then we're going to spot it on the blue litmus paper. Please write your observations and record them on your data table. In this part of the activity, we're going to do what are called flame tests. As we will learn later in the semester, the atoms of substances have electrons that are sort of located or arranged in different energy levels. So sometimes they're able to absorb energy and switch levels 
which when they return to the original level, they release that energy again in the form of light of specific frequencies. And so because different atoms are arranged in different ways, you can sometimes use the color of that emission of light to identify the substances. For this part of the experiment, we're going to use little wood splints that have been moistened in water so they will not burn. And if I simply put the moistened thing here, you'll see that there's no change to the flame in the, uh, in the water. So the water by itself does not cause any changes in here. However, let's see what happens if instead of water, I put a little salt in here, sodium chloride. Let's see what happens to the flame now. As you can see, it acquires a very bright yellow color. And that is a flame test for sodium ions. Let's see what happens with something like strontium chloride instead. Let's see what the ions of strontium will do. And I have some in here in this little sample here. And what we get is a, let's see if we can get it. Oh, there you go. It's like a red flame. Sorry that in my camera it doesn't show very well, but it's mainly a kind of like a red flame. Sorry, it's too bright there. I'm going to make it just close enough. You can see the red flames. There you go. So red color. Let's see what happens with copper 2 ions. This would be copper 2 chloride. I'm going to take a sample in here. I'm just doing these to demonstrate how this works. Okay. I'm going to put it a little behind the flame so you can see the change in color. You can see it's kind of like an aqua green, aqua blue kind of flame. And that is the flame test for copper 2 ions. Now, uh, potassium is an interesting one. It doesn't give a very, very significant change. What you're going to see is perhaps a pale kind of yellowish with a hint of purple on it. And again, like I said, it's kind of hard to see it here on my uh, camera. Unfortunately, it doesn't pick up very well. But essentially, what you get is kind of like a purplish type of uh, surrounding. You can see it there surrounding the yellow flame also. So those are some examples of them. So what we're going to do today is we're going to test the solutions that you made. Let's start out with your sodium chloride. This is the first one that you have here. I am going to test it. This is from our actual test tube sample that we have. And let's see, have your data sheet ready to write down your observations. This is sodium chloride. Okay. Hope you wrote that down. Now let's try our uh, hydrochloric acid or HCl solution. Again, I'm going to grab a sample here so that I can't figure out how to show you this. And let's see what happens. You can see there's no, well, I'll let you observe what you observe there. Sorry about that. And now we're going to do the KOH. And remember, in this case, we're obviously testing for the cations. In this case, that would be the potassium. So here is my KOH. And let's see what I get. All right, that's your observation there. It's similar to one that I showed you earlier on. And those are your observations for this part of the experiment. In this part of the experiment, we're going to be testing the response of our three solutions to an indicator. The indicator that we're going to use is called phenolphthalein. And it is a chemical that changes color when it's exposed to a basic solution. So in the presence of something that's neutral or acidic, it doesn't change colors. But in the presence of a basic solution, it turns to a neon pink color. So we're going to add a drop, two drops of phenolphthalein to each tube. First, here is NaCl. Next is HCl, and last is KOH. Let's mix them a little bit. And please write down your observations on your data sheet.
Okay, after you have finished with today's activity, you will have some residual HCl and some residual KOH solutions. The HCl, please uh, ask your instructor for directions. Uh, we may be collecting it back, so there may be a container for you to pour it back in because we can use it at some other time or in some other classes. Now, the KOH that you made, you calculated it to be approximately 0.5 molar. In the next part of this activity, in part B, we're going to learn techniques to determine the actual molarity of that solution. So we need to save it for then. So uh, grab a bottle with a stopper that fits it, and then take your residual KOH. We're going to store it in there, so carefully put it back in there. And we're going to store this on the shelves. And in a couple of days, or depending when the, what the schedule says, you'll need to use this again. So make sure you label it with your name, names, and what it is, you know, approximately 0.5 molar KOH. Next time, we're going to look at that solution, and we're going to try to determine its exact molarity to four decimal places. And then later on, in experiment 9A, where we study an unknown acid, we are going to use it again to do what is called a titration. Okay? Thank you very much.